Hey guys, what's going on? It's Matt, Turn Over 943, and today's video, I have a little bit different video for you guys. So it's a tutorial, but it's going to be on something I've never really done before. What I'm going to show you guys in today's tutorial is how to edit and change sound sets on MTH engines. Now, the changing has been shown before. Eric Siegel's done a video on it a long time ago. However, the editing is something that it's a little bit newer in development. So there's a program out here, which I'll show you. It's called an ADPCM program, and that's a type of audio. And the guy that makes this, you can play the sounds, and you can also edit them. So what I'm going to show you in today's video here is how to edit a sound set. I actually edited a couple of them. But our main goal is to change the sound set in this E6 to something that sounds a little bit different. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the programs we need and I'm going to also give you a general idea on how to use the program. So I'll edit just a couple of files that need some work. And then what we'll do is we'll take the file from this E6 and we'll grab about six other steam engine files and intersperse pieces parts to make one custom file. So it's going to be a lot of fun, so this tutorial is a little bit long, but trust me, it's worth it. So let's get going here. Okay, so you don't really need much as far as materials go on this project, because mainly we're using the computer the whole time. So really the only thing you need besides a computer is a way to connect the TIU to the computer. So depending on what version TIU you have, this is a little bit different. You can use either or these cables. If you have the newer version or an older one, you can only use the serial cable here. But So we have a serial cable right here, and this is a 9-pin serial to USB. And now if you have a newer REVL TIU, which I have, I'm using one of these. It's a printer cable, USB-C, I believe it is. So they both do the same thing. However, with this, you don't actually need to apply power to the TIU because the plug does it for you, and that's known on these. This cable has a 5-volt bus on it, so it will actually run the power directly to the TIU, so you don't actually need to power it separately. But that's that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the computer fired up and get to work. So... All right, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start off by downloading the software we need to do the work. So right here, we're on the MTH site, and we're going to download the consumer loader. So we're going to use the DCS button. Download DCS software. And then we're going to download the most recent version of the consumer loader. So we will click this, and I've already done this, so I don't have to. But you can read about it here. And then when you're ready to download, click this, and then you can follow the prompts, and then you're all set. And then the other thing we're going to need is the ADPCM program. So we're going to use the most recent version, which is right here, version 154. And when you download that, you're going to get a zip file, and it has the application file in here. And it also has in here the sound file structure for the Protosound 2 and Protosound 3 file names. So we can see here we have the name itself and all these little boxes show you what all these letters mean. So like we have the processor voltage here, the catalog volume, the type of announcements it has, description, file revision, file extension, day, month, and year released. So it's really pretty cool. And that'll just show you a little bit about that. So now that everything's all downloaded, we can go ahead and actually start doing the sound file work. So to start off, we're going to download a couple files here. Now, I'm going to download a few but I'm going to show you how to download two to start. So I'm going to download the R12 subway set for MTH because there's a couple of 
errors in that file that I want to correct. So we're going to start off with the 3rd Avenue shuttle set, which just so happens to be the first one in the list. So we're going to use the support link. And we're going to download the file. So we're going to right click on the ProtoSound 2 icon, save link. Now in this case, it puts it in the downloads folder, which that's fine for me, but you can put it wherever you want. And then we're also going to download the number seven flushing local train. Now you would think it would be the picture of the set and in 99% of the cases it is. However, if we try to download this, you might think it would be the set. However, it's actually the Broadway set, which is the white set right here. So they got them reversed, which it happens. So this one is actually the file we want. So we have the flushing right there. So we're going to save that. Then we're all set so we can jump out of this. And we can download the file here with the program and get to work. Okay, so the first file we're going to work with is the flushing line train. So we're going to open that up. Now there's several things you want to pay attention to before you even start looking at all the files, clips rather. So when you go to edit these and change things around, you're going to want to pay attention to the available space, which is in this case is in bytes up here. And then the available time for new clips, which in this case is 61.28 seconds. So you want to be mindful of that. Because if this number up here grows from 1 to 2, you can't put it in your engine because the board that's in this flushing train is a 1 megabyte board. And that's why the sound file is 1 megabyte. And that's all the space it has. So you just want to be careful with it. And, you know, delete things that you would never use first before you start adding things. It's just the easiest way to go about it. So we'll start looking at the clips now. So... On every engine, all the Proto 2s and 3s, they have anywhere from 1 to 255 clips. So if I go to the end here, there we go, there's the end. Now, it won't play all 255, there are some sections that are empty. So if I scroll up here, we have some empty space in the 200s. Come we have some empty space in the 150 range and then so on and so forth. So what these mean is that there's certain sections that'll play at certain times. So like number one, that's the startup sounds. Two's the shutdown. And now this is a subway set. So in the case of the subway, some of these other sections are just clips that'll play like during the station stops and things. So if I play this one, That's cars on City Street. And then if I play another. That's another subway train passing by. I'll grab another one here. Now some of these air let offs and things, some of them are in this file like five times and it'll just randomly pick ones to play. So if you see the same file in here a bunch of times, it just will pick different ones to play. So there's another, I think another one here too. Yep. So you can just keep going and there's certain ones that are unique to engines as far as placement and then there's some that are the same with everything. So if I go to, let's say 152, that's my horn. Now, this is a subway, so that's the only horn we have. However, on 153 through 156, on a normal engine that has an ending on the horn, that would be your ending clips, and I'll show you that later on. Now, again, for subway, the PFA button doesn't actually do anything on the subway. However, 
when you run in auto mode, these will be your station stops. So if I play one here. 46th Street and Bliss Street. Play another. 74th Street, Broadway, Jackson Heights. So we have from 80 to 88 of station stops. And then also along the route, we have down here changes for specific stops. So like this will be the stop for 74th Street Broadway. Change here for IND, EF, and GG trains. And then this, this will be the stop for 61st Street Woodside. Change here for Long Island Railroad trains. And now depending on your set, depending on what change would be happening on the real station stop, it'll play them. Now in some cases you'll see where it'll alternate between two changes. So like, let me pull up my D train here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in the case of the D train at 161st Street, which I think is this one. Fordham Road. Uh, nope. 161st Street, Yankee Stadium. There we go. So in the case of that clip 82, we also have down here some changes. Now, again, depending on the stop you'll have various changes however on this one we actually have two different changes on here that it'll play Rockefeller Center Radio City Music Hall so it'll either play that one or this one change here for F trains to Queens so it's kinda neat so that way it'll pick which one it'll play or sometimes it'll play nothing and again it's just randomization of what it plays so I'm gonna go back to the R12 so what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to actually edit a, these clips because they're wrong in this case. So this clip actually is for the 61st Street Woodside station announcement, which is wrong. Change here for IND, EF, and GG trains. So that one should be for 74th Street Broadway, and likewise this should be for 61st Street Woodside. Change here for Long Island Railroad trains. However, it's reversed, so we're going to fix that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually copy this file. That way, in case it gets screwed up, you accidentally do something wrong, you don't got to go back to the site and re-download it. So we're going to copy. Paste. So we're going to open our copy. Under our PFA, and then we'll find 102, which again is wrong, so we're going to change it. Now, in this case, it's a simple change. We just go flip flop 102 and 104, but in other cases, you may have differences. So, now because I already know that all I got to do is flip these, I don't actually have to open up this file and listen to it again. So, we're just going to go edit clip. Then we're going to replace a clip with a clip from another sound file. So we're going to make sure that our original R12 is selected. And this is why I said make a copy. So at 104, we're going to replace the 102. And then at 102, we're going to replace with 104. So now when we get to 61st Street Woodside, we'll hear... And likewise with 74th Street. Change here for IND, EF, and GG trains. So there we go. Now, in this set, there's actually another problem, and this one's a little bit harder to correct, and that is this. Queens Plaza. Now, the stop should be Queensboro Plaza. However, the guy that did the announcements, I don't think he has a stop that he says Queensboro Plaza, so you're just going to have to either live with it or. If you desperately want Queensboro Plaza, I could take a file from another engine like the R36 World's Fair set. That one has Queensboro Plaza. However, it's a different announcer. So it all depends on what you like. Okay, so now we're going to have some more fun. So right here we have the file for the R12. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to have some fun. We're going to take some files from various steam engines and combine them into one big file and we're gonna have some fun so we're gonna start off with a file
And this is going to be one of the two base files we use. So we're going to use this blue goose. And now in this case, this is a 5 volt board engine. So what you want to pay attention to is it, depending on what you're actually loading the file into, you want to make sure that you load the same type. So in this case, I'm loading this file into 5 volt board. So I'm going to use this option. However, if I was loading this into a 3 volt board, I would use the upgrade option. It's the same file, it's just that this one is set up for 3 volt, this one's set up for 5 volt. Now that's important only when you're doing a base file. You can use whatever other file you want. If you want to mix 3 and 5 volt clips, you can because they're clips. The processor type of the sound set is what determines what type it is. Like for this E6, which this is going to be our other base file we use, I could use the 3 volt option, but I'm going to use the 5 volt. Then we're going to do another one here. Do the 5 volt for the northern. And then I'll show you this. So we're going to type in another word one here. We're going to do the. Do the blue comet. Now, in the case of the blue comet, I'm going to use the Proto 1. upgrade file which is the only choice because this is a Proto 1 engine so if you were to upgrade this to a 3 this would be the file you would use so it's our only option here and I'm just going to keep going Now just so you know, in the case of a 3 volt board engine, your only choice is going to be the Proto 2 file, because it's a 3 volt file to begin with, so there's nothing to upgrade in it. So like, if this engine was a Proto 3 and you wanted to reuse this file, your only choice is the 3 volt file, because technically there's no upgrade, because you can use a 3 volt file in a PS3 engine, no problem. Okay, so we're done here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of these files. Again, so that way if I screw something up, I don't have to re-download them. And then we'll get to work. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to combine these files and take pieces, parts of each file and make a file here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the base file of this blue goose along with some files from this E6 because that's the engine I'm going to put this file into and then I'm going to take pieces parts from the K4 right here the Empire State the Blue Comet the Northern and this Berkshire file and we're just going to intersperse little pieces from each file and make a custom file so we'll start by opening the blue goose, and then we'll open the E6. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to grab the passenger announcements from the E6, which is the Nelly Bly passenger train. So in this particular case, it's actually a little weird because it's not in the spot you would think it would be. It's not in 80. The announcements on this one are all over the place. So I believe 105 is our departure, I think. Now arriving from New York, train number 1073. 
the Nelly Bly. We have our arrival, so we're going to find the arrival for the goose, which I think is here. Now arriving from Chicago, train number 19, the Chief. Yep, so we're going to edit our clip, replace a clip, find our 3 volt copy. Here we're going to put 105. So now when we cue the passenger announcements, we're going to hear the arrival for the Nellie Bly. Now arriving from New York, train number 1073, the Nellie Bly. And then we'll do the same thing with the departure, which I believe is 91. Now departing for Atlantic City and all points south, train number 1073, the Nellie Bly. So we'll put that in there. So then now what you can do is you can take little pieces, parts from each file and intersperse them in. So we're going to do that next. So we're going to find the watcher step. Train number 4203, the blue comet. Okay, here's an example. We don't need this. So we're just going to flat out delete it. Okay, now let's look for what we're looking for. Watcher step, please. Watcher step. Okay, there we are. So I don't want that. I'm going to put the northern clip in that space. So we're going to hunt for that. Okay, so we're going to take our northern watcher step and we're going to put it with the blue goose. So we're just going to double tap on this. Watch your step, please. Watch your step. So we'll type it in. Do it. And then we're just going to keep on going with this. So I'm not going to show you every last clip I'm going to put in here, but I'll do one more just so you guys can see it. So we're going to take clip 16, which is the dynamo startup. We're going to put that in the goose. Same thing with 17. So then I will just keep going. So what I'm basically going to be doing, and I'm not going to show all of this because we'll be here forever. But I'm going to be taking various little pieces, parts from each file, listening to them, and determining where they're going to go. So I'll do a few of these, and then when I get to some interesting ones, I will pull the camera back up, and we will take a look at how we do it. All right, so here's another one I want to do. So on the Nelly Bly, I want arrival announcements. I want it to say, welcome to in a city. So in this case, we're going to pull up. This is the blue comment I'm working with. So we're going to pull up that piece, which is actually way at the bottom. It's right in here. We have various announcements here. Not that one. There we go. So 248 to 251 are our arrival town announcements that we have here. To Elizabeth Port. To Red Bank. Now on the Blue Goose, we also have them, but... It's a different train, so it's different places. Stick shows, 40 inches. Welcome to Kansas City, Missouri. Welcome to Dodge City. So we're going to take these and we're going to find where we start. To Lakewood. Okay, so 248. So we're going to edit our clip. Replace. Find our comment. Double tap. Now we're just going to do this for all of our stops. Now in this case, I also can add in this, this stop here. To Lakehurst. So we can add Lakehurst in here. So to do that, we're going to edit our clip. We're going to add a clip this time, and then we'll double tap. And now that's in there. So that's pretty cool. And that way you can, again, intersperse little pieces, parts into each file and make your custom file that way. Okay, so here's another one I want to do. I want to put in the whistle from the K4 here. That's why I downloaded this one. So I want to do all the whistle files. So we'll start off with 41, which is the short whistle. 
So on our goose, we're going to throw that in. Now we're going to add one. So we're going to add in the crossing signal, which is 42. Now, if your engine doesn't have this, you can make your own. And I'll link in the description a video done by the guy who wrote this program on how to do it. He showed how to do it. But in this case, I'm cheating a little bit because I have one. So we're just going to put that in. And then we'll do the forward signal as well. So now, I was talking earlier about the endings for the whistle. So when you blow the whistle on the engine, this is what you'll hear. When you just press the button and release it. However, when you hold it down for a length of time, you'll get something that might sound like this. Or this. Or this. And now, obviously on the Texas, on the Blue Goose rather, it'll be something similar just a different sound so but we're going to make sure we put these in as well because it would be annoying if you press the button and you hear a completely different sound So again, we're just going to keep on going with this until we have all the clips we want to hear in the file. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to load the file into the engine. And you want to take note of a couple things. And the first thing is that when we load the file into the engine here, you may have to pull it out of the engine, edit the file again, and this may happen several times until you find what you actually like. So just keep in mind that what you're going to be hearing may not be the final sound file that you'll put in the engine, or in my case, what I'll put in the engine. So it just takes some experimentation, and also that we added the crossing signal sound into the engine. So we'll want to make sure we go into the edit soft key option and make sure that the soft key for the crossing signal is set. So that way when we activate the button, it'll actually play the crossing signal. So we'll go ahead and load the file into the engine and listen to it next. Okay, so I have our E6 on the track and what we're going to do is we're going to load the file. So we're going to send the sound file to the engine. Now I've edited the name so that way it's easier for me to know what it is. So here we are right up here. We're going to open. And it's going to search for the engine. And now I shut my internet off on the computer just so that way you can see that it's doing this without internet connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and wait for this thing to wrap up and when it's done the engine will fire up right away and we can give it a listen. Okay, so we're almost done. In just a minute it'll fire up and we can give it a listen. Alright, so what I'm going to start off by doing is I'm going to shut it off and I'm going to re-add it into my remote. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are, and 
Just that I added in the crossing signal button. So when it's called on, it'll be played. So alright, I'm going to start off by doing the extended startup sequence. And then we will give a listen to some of the other sounds afterwards. Alright, so there's your extended startup, so now below the whistle, and we can hear what that sounds like. Now here it is when I hold the button down for a minute, you can hear the endings. Here's our bell. And here's our crossing signal, so you can hear that. Now I'll play the PFA sounds. Now arriving from New York, train number 1073, the Nelly Block. We're arriving on the Now quickly move it back and forth so you can hear the chuffs. Now one thing to know is that when you do the sound set changes, it'll reset the chuffs to two chuffs, so if you want four, you have to reset it to four. Extend a shutdown so you can hear that.
All right, so there you go. Now that was just a little demo of the sounds that we edited in. Now, I personally want to do some edits on this file. However, you know, it's all up to a matter of personal preference. And one thing to note is that when you're editing these files, again, like I said, you may have to come back in and edit them two, three, maybe four more times until you get something that you're 100% satisfied with. In my case, the PFA, there were some things I wanted to have in there that weren't in there. The idle sound, like that, the beginning part, and when it's sitting idle. Let me shut it off so you can hear me. That other clip that's played, that's from the E6, and while it's a little bit more drawn out than the newer ones, I don't like it as much on this particular sound set. I liked it when it was in the E6, but when it's changed around like this, it just doesn't sound right, so I'm going to change that. And there's also some other things I wanted to hear, like in the extended startup, there were some things I wanted to hear in there. So I'll go back and edit this file, and then after that, it's going to be 100%. So... Now there's one thing I did want to mention in here is that in MTH steam engines you can do quillable whistle. However, they have to be a 3 volt board that's flashed with the quillable whistle code in it or a Proto 3 engine that has the quillable whistle. All Proto 3 steam have quillable whistle. So if you want cooling whistle in a MTH Proto 2, you're pretty much out of luck unless you have a 3 volt board that's flashed with it. 5 volt it won't work. So Unfortunately, that's all you can do, but I know this video is kind of long, but to do it, to show you what I need to show you correctly, it will take a while, but what can you do? So, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will talk to you next time. I'll edit this file, and what I'll do is I will do a follow-up video on this, show you the edited file, and what I did to it, etc. So, alright guys, you take care. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.